Good evening to everyone. We'll be starting in just a minute in Revelation 12. <clears throat> this was supposed to be a lazy day. Mm -hmm. Isn't your retirement supposed to be a lazy day? I know. Nope. It wasn't. It was not a lazy day. Hey, Wanda. Hey, Lori. Hey, Wanda. Carol. How are y'all? My glasses are dirty. <laughs> not more of me. Yeah. More so, of you. Do your hand like that. Say so we're, we're even. <laughs> look, look. Oh, you're funny. We're in Revelation 12. If you want to go ahead and find that. and <clears throat> I'm still making some last minute notes. Well, it's about the end time. So, last minute, end last, time. She yeah, get it. That's right. Hey, Kathy. Oh, hey, Donna. <coughs> Kathy said, hey. Happy retirement, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. I'm officially, uh, Monday is my first official day, but the last two days I just took off. Yeah. And Monday will be a official, official, but I have to tell you something. I don't think it's fair. Retirement days go faster than work days. And I don't think that's right. Because they should I, go slower. Yeah, they should go slower, but I got out there today and was... We got a new camper and I've been remodeling it and fixing it the way we want it. And it was, uh, it was just like it went, the day went by so quick. And we got up early too. Yeah, we did. I thought I was going to sleep late. We had coffee for two hours. That's true. And you were in your robe and I was in my robe and we sat at the table for two hours and you didn't have a conference call. You didn't have any emails, nope. no texts from work. Nope. No phone calls, no uh, re weekly report to do, no um, spreadsheets to correct. It was kind of wild, wasn't it? It was. You handled it so good. I was so <laughs> proud of you. I I've been practicing. Yes, you have. Okay. <clears throat> now right, we're going to get started. I'll open this in prayer. Father, we come before you today, Lord, we ask you that you bless this Bible study, anoint it, Lord. Your word is, is life, bringing life to us, Father, through it, and help us to be prepared for these last days. I ask, Father, that you would help us all to have ears to hear tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> um, Donna said she had some incidents to assign to you. Sorry. Naughty. Naughty, Donna. Naughty. Hey, Roger. We're being silly. Yes, we are. Yep. Um, as I've mentioned through this study, uh, Revelation 1 through 3 was the seven churches of Revelation or seven time periods. Revelation 4 is um, the rapture of the church and up through 6, 6 through 11 is the seven-year tribulation. And here back in ch chapter 12, we jump back to the middle of the, tw of the seven years again. And so as we discussed, um, there'll be three and a half years of world peace or seeming peace. And then the Antichrist will um, have the abomination that, of, desolation. of desolation and sacrifice to himself inside the, the temple. And uh, maybe when it shifts back like this, we should do the little wavy lines. lines. Um, I know when I watch movies like that, it's confusing to me. I know. I mean, I have to like wait a minute. They jump and back and he time. had gray hair. Why does he not have gray hair now? And you have to explain it to me. But you know, they do it for poetic reasons. I don't know why God did it this way, but <clears throat> we are. Back in the middle of the, the, we're three and a half years into the tribulation in chapter 12. <coughs> Kathy said, we'll keep you busy with 
Bible study, Paul, maybe you can make us some fancy charts. I would love to do charts. I love charts. I know it. I'm a, I'm a visual learner. I need to have the visual picture. Maybe when, since you're retired, we can clean out the office and get set up for charts. I could do a massive revelation to seven years, and then you could do the artwork for me. I would do that. That's right. And Carol said, Jane, that we have been praying for has been moved to a rehab unit. Praise God. That's wonderful. That's good. You're right, Carol. Grass will not grow under his feet. Mm. We have so many things to do. It's just nice. Nice. Well, my job normally is sitting at a desk in front of a computer yes, most I of the think, time, and I, I think didn't do that. You'll be physically today. feeling much better because you'll be more active. Yeah. And Tomorrow I, we're all going to the Montgomery Art Museum. <gasps> Marianne, if you're watching, you should come to Montgomery Art Museum tomorrow. We're going to have a field day. So understand as we're about to start this that we are halfway into the tribulation. Yes. You know, that we're three and a half years in. So the <clears> first three and a half years, the Antichrist shows, the rapture's happened, the Antichrist shows up, and he seemingly brings peace to the world. Mm -hmm. But they don't know he's the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. yep. They just think he's a very charismatic world leader. And that's another reason I think that, that the church will have to be raptured away because... We'll know. We'll know. We'll say, uh, you shouldn't be listening to that guy. Right? I say that a lot now about different people. And yeah, folks but don't listen. This will be something different. Yeah. <clears throat> um, if you would read Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, and she being me, with... Just one. Oh, sorry. Um, now, this woman is Israel. And when, in the book, when Jack Van Impey related an Old Testament passage to this, I, I had one of those jaw-dropping moments. Yeah. Because he listed, he went back to Genesis 37, 9 through 11 to Joseph's dream and Everybody that studied that, we all went through Genesis before, but we remember the first dream, or the dream he had, the second, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the first dream he had was the sheaves all bowing down to him. Right. The second dream he had, he said, um, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and moon and 11 stars made obeisance to me and told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him. So I never thought about why he had that dream of the sun and moon and basically the 12 stars, because he was the 12th star. That is Israel. No, he would have been the 11th, because Benjamin would have been the 12th, right? Yeah. Well, the, he saw actually saw 11. Oh. Yeah. So when you... When you um, think about that and you connect things in Scripture, it makes sense, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like a clue. Right. We look for clues in movies and in books when we're mysteries, and we look for those things. And the, the author puts those things in there for us to, um, you know, a uh, 1972 penny was found. And then here later is a 1972 penny. Wait a minute. Wasn't that the same European, you know? Yeah. That's a little too obvious. But yeah. when we have this, such a big book, and we put that in there, God wanted us to connect through study because he wants us to find out. He's hidden these gems in there for us, right? Right. And that's what makes Bible study so great is you start to see this stuff. And uh, you may have heard someone um, elaborate and say that, you know, this means this, but then you say, wait a minute, how, how would you figure that out? That doesn't make sense. But if you connect this, the spirit of God inside of you as a Christian will confirm that. Right. Right? Right. So that that is, makes it more clear that the, the woman clothed well, with, with the, the sun, sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. That is Israel. 
um, verse 2. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Okay, so we're looking at Israel producing something, and we're going to find out in verse 5 that this is Jesus. Ah. Now, we're look, it's one of those situations where you've shifted back in time in the story, but mm -hmm. John is seeing the story and seeing what takes place. So we have to understand that, right? right. We have to see that <coughs> that he um, is watching and he writes down what he sees, but we already know that Jesus came from Israel. Um, three, three and four. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. <clears throat> and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay, See, so this is where it's all getting. So can you guess who the, who the red dragon is? The Antichrist? Satan. Satan. Yeah, Satan. Yeah. It's Satan ready to, and you know, when Jesus was born, um, that they tried to kill all the babies to try to get rid of him. Right. And uh, the devil was was trying, knowing that he, he would come out of Israel, out of the root of Jesse. And notice in verse 4, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, which did cast them to earth. You ever heard that, a that third a, of the a angels. third of the angels fell when yeah. Satan fell? He, he took a third wing. Well, this is the, the verse that says that. Yeah. <coughs> so how do you know? How do we know that this is it right here? <coughs> a third of the, <coughs> excuse me, I've been working outside all day in the pollen. <coughs> a third of the stars. And you know, the stars all through Revelation have been the messengers of the angelic beings, right? Mm -hmm. um, the beings. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for right. to devour her child. So that's a pretty gruesome scene. Yeah. But God intervened. We know that Jesus was delivered to the world. Um, and John is witnessing this story. Um so he will fully understand, and so we will fully understand. It's not something that has happened overnight. And I think that's important for us to see that this story is not, this is not just God blowing up at some point and getting mad at the world and judgment coming down. This is the battle between the, the evil one, Satan, and God. This is the battle yeah. with, with us, his people involved, and with Israel, his people involved. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, and we we look through the Bible trying to see um, other things of of world what the world says is is important world history, and the Bible is written from God's perspective about God's people. Mm -hmm. It's written about Israel, and that's why we somebody says, well, why why isn't uh, America in the United in the Bible? Mm -hmm. It has to do with Israel. It's not got to do with America. We like to think America is the center of the world, and right. Israel is the center of the world. Right. Israel is is the where the, the. It does make you wonder, though, what happens with us. It does. We see Gog and Magog, and we see the Middle East, but you know, yeah. where are we? Yeah, makes you wonder. Well, makes you wonder. <coughs> we've known from the first chapters that we studied that all these um, a third of the world is is uh destroyed and a third of mankind is killed and we see that uh, that there's a lot of plagues and famine and wars and all that so at this point we don't know yeah right right we could already be gone right right yes thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yoshima <coughs> said, looking forward to your charts. <clears throat> um, five and six. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Okay. Sound familiar? Any of that? Mm -hmm. um, Jesus was caught up into heaven. Mm -hmm. But he said he's to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. When he comes back, you will. Yeah. So he was caught up into heaven, and the woman fled into the wilderness. The Israel was scattered throughout mm -hmm. the earth. Mm -hmm. But this is during this is now right in the middle of the tribulation, because we we know that because I got to let Winston out. I'm okay. Sorry. We know that uh, this is the middle of the tribulation because uh, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's twelve hundred and sixty days, which is a um, the the three and a half years is told um, several different ways in Revelation. You can put it all together and you can say that's the same time period. And as you read this, God had John write this down multiple ways. But when you read to understand and try to think about it, it it figures out the same thing. Now the, the Jewish calendar is 30 days a month. So 30 days a month, uh, 1,260 days total of three and a half years, and it's also 42 weeks. I think that's right. 40, yeah, 42 weeks. That's three and a half years. So that's... We, that tells us again that this is not past history. That tells us that this is the, the history in the future. Did you get all that? I did. Okay. <clears throat> um, Lori said, I'm going to be gone in a twinkling of an eye. I'm going to be gone. I won't have to say goodbye. Amen. That's right. Kathy said it makes you wonder if God waited until we were all connected by internet and TV, etc., and ways to communicate so we would really see what was happening in Israel and other signs. Who knows if grids will be up when the rapture happens? That's true. Good point. That's true. Very good point. Well, there's no doubt that some of the things written in Revelation reveal that the last days the technology will fail us it will bloom first yes but then it will fail us yes. and it has done that yes um actually in this uh section here we're going to look at that uh seven through nine and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So a war is breaking forth in heaven. Now Michael the archangel is mentioned five times in the Bible three times in the book of Daniel, having to do with last day prophecies. Michael comes to Daniel. It was Michael that came in and said, um, when he had prayed, he said, for 21 days I fought um, basically a demon, and now I've come here to tell you that the prophecy, that was the Daniel 70-week prophecy, and two more times in the book of Daniel having to do with end, end times or last days things. And then in the book of Jude, um, Michael is seen contending with Satan for the body of Moses. I don't know if y'all have ever read that, but it's in the book of Jude. Um, I think I've got a reference here. Uh, Jude, verse 9, and um, has to do with Israel. And then here 
it, he's mentioned one time in the book of Revelation. He's the archangel, the mighty angel in heaven, and he um, here fights. He and angels fight against uh, Satan and his angels and prevail not. Who prevailed not? Satan. That's what I thought. But it's sort of it's sort of can be misunderstood there. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Okay, but you know the way they shifted up into two different. Yeah. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Yeah, and Jack Van Impey said, let me just read some of his things, because he said people are surprised to find that Satan is not cast down to earth already. Um, what page are you on in the book? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. That always did, I don't want to say confuse me. It, it made me wonder why Satan was allowed to come and present before the Lord. Because he presented Job, you know, and he talked to the Lord. And I always wondered why he was allowed to do that, why he was not locked up. Yeah. Well, um, and one thing I, I may have missed is... Uh, Thank you, Maudie. Maudie said congratulations on your retirement. Well, thank you, Maudie. Um, well, trying to find my notes. Um, basically, you said that Satan <coughs> is not in hell. He's not been in hell. He's going to be in hell in the end after the millennium. He's going to be bound in the bottomless pit at the end of the book of Revelation. Then after the millennial reign, he will be in, cast into hell. <coughs> but he is the prince of the power of the air. And there's the first, second, and third heaven. Right. And he reigns in that. And um, well, Are you going to cover that later with the first, second, and third heaven? Because um, there's, there's people who don't really know that there's... A first, second, third heaven. Okay. I have notes here and I can't find them. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry. Retirement brain kicking here, in. Here it is. <laughs> the coffee's just now working. Um, the war is on, and this is in page 140, the bottom. The war is on, and it is the great greatest aerial combat in history. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, Satan, and the dragon fought against his angels. Are you shocked to discover Satan in heaven? Most people, including most Christians, imagine him as a little creature dressed in a red uniform running around in a place called hell, jabbing his victims with a pitchfork. This is a lot of mythological nonsense. Satan is a magnificent creature to behold. In fact, his beauty brought his ruin. Ezekiel 28:17 states, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and they may behold, that they may behold thee. Not only is it a lie to picture Satan as a grotesque monstrosity, but it is equally false to place him in hell. He has never been there. He is the god of this world system and the prince of the power of the air and the prince of this world, as we have already observed. He has been in heavens one and two, the aerial and stellar heavens, since his fall, and he will remain there until he is cast to the earth in verse 9. It is also important to note that he is not cast into eternal hell, the lake of fire, to join those he has duped until after the millennium, Revelation 20.10. Now, as this battle is fought, Satan is defeated. Satan is mighty, but God is almighty. Satan can destroy, but God can destroy the destroyer. That is why the Christian should never fear the events of daily life. He has the victory in Jesus. Amen. Satan's demise began when he was cast out of the third heaven, Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. So the third heaven is where God is. Right. This first and second heavens, um, the aerial and the stellar heavens. That's the aerial heavens is where planes fly and astronauts go, and the stellar heavens is the universe. The outer space. And then the third heaven is where God is. So that's the first, that's, and it's referred to that way, the first, second, third heaven. And, and Paul, one, once or twice, refers to he was caught up to 
the third heaven. And that's what he's talking about. Right. Right. So we, we can um, picture that, that he's the prince of the power of the air, which is uh, another reason I don't fly. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> hey, Sissy. <clears throat> Um, Kathy said, I wonder if God will ultimately destroy him. Will he be destroyed or will he just be locked up in the lake of fire? We'll find out. That's kind of interesting. Near the end of the book. And um, Donna said, why was he allowed to come into heaven? He was created in heaven. He was there in the beginning as, um, from what I understand, being the pipes and tablets that it is written about him that he was musical. His, from what I understand, his entire being was music. Yes. Everything about him was music, yes. which is, of course, why music is so powerful now and yes. so destructive. Can be, yes. And um, can be, yes. And um, pride entered. He found he believed himself to be equal with God, yes. and that's when. Well, you know, we discussed out. this in earlier Bible studies that there's no mention of angels singing. And I wondered if that was stopped when Satan fell, if there was music before then. And because it led a third of the angels away, um, I wondered because it just, we always see angels singing and angel choirs and those kind of things. But you read through the Bible, you don't find any references of any angel except saying, holy, yes. holy, holy is the word. But the, but the, the people of God sing the songs of the redeemed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know how y'all are when you when you get into deep worship. But for me, when I when I spend time in worship, I start with singing but when I get into deep worship, the singing stops yeah. and it's silent. Yeah, that's true. And I wonder if that's part of that progression Maybe. that we move past the singing to the deep stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, Donna said, wow, I didn't realize this. And... If only he used his power for good instead of evil. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he sure does know how to wield his weapons, doesn't he? Well, and music and, is used today to, to mislead a lot of people. Yes, I mean, it, it is. is. Um, and it's mixed in with a lot of uh, Christian churches kind of things. It's, it's sort of... Uh, it's it can it can be going the right direction and all of a sudden it went over the line you know from praise and worship to glorifying that one person that sang we mm. we have seen people through the years that they would not sing unless they were soloists they couldn't sing with a the choir they didn't want to get up there they wanted to do specials you know I don't want to sing with the choir I want to do a special mm -hmm. and um, they had to be the one with the mic they had to be the one up there and yeah the choir can sing behind me if they want to but I'm, I'm doing the special and that if you're bringing attention to yourself that is not glorifying God that's right and I think a lot of this uh overly I don't know what I know what the music term it is overly vibrato and and doing uh vocal gymnastics with your notes and going up and down and you know, just because somebody can belt out a, a a note, that does not mean that they're bringing glory to God. Have you listened to any of Lenny's music? Oh, it is it is moving so deeply. She she is her music is incredible. Of course, okay. I think yours is too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Kathy said so much music is just disgusting in my opinion the lyrics kids listen to are shameful and harmful mm. I have a very eclectic taste in music some is blatantly offensive <laughs> well then quit that Kathy <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know what you meant 
Um, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame... That's, oh, just ten. Just ten. Um, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. That's what he does. Uh, when we read the first chapter of Job, Satan has been going up and down in the earth yeah. and looking for someone to accuse. And God says, have you considered my servant Job? Right? Yep. And he says, well, Job's only obedient and follows you because you put a hedge of protection around him. I wonder <clears> how <throat> many other people he presented to God and perhaps they didn't succeed. But Satan always accuses us. And one of the things, yeah. and, and basically that means slander or lie about. Yeah. So whenever you see someone who is going about the church, going about the community, slandering you or I, yeah. lying about us, making up things that aren't so, or telling something slanted or shaded so that they don't tell the whole truth because mm -hmm. they want you to. I mean, look at our news today. The news just simply doesn't report it if it doesn't go with their political agenda. They just, yeah. they just don't go that way. And that it, that is, it used to not be, there used to be ethics in uh, journalism, and now that's been thrown out the door. It's, yeah. it's all a political system. It absolutely and, is. And your political beliefs have um, been swayed by watching media that is this way or this way. Right. And um, we're talking about worldwide things and i think that it's just um something that's coming to pass we've never had worldwide media until the last 200 years um and and now we have instant worldwide media yeah. uh, when that bridge fell in um, baltimore the other day i when i got up making my coffee i saw it at the video we saw and it was only a few hours old and i, I mean it was incredible that we just saw it and uh this kind of thing, the, the deceiving the brethren, um, the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So this reveals what Satan does. He goes to God and he says, have you seen Paul? Have you looked at Paul? Have you watched, Did you notice this about Paul? And he's the accuser of the brethren. And the truth is, some of the, I mean, I'm not perfect. And some of the stuff he says is probably, yeah, uh, Paul did do that. Right, but God says, but He's covered with the blood. That's right. Right, the blood covers it all. It so all. we we see we get a picture here, and we get a little glimpse of something on the other side that we didn't know that He is the accuser of the brethren, day and night. Now, I like that verse eleven's coming up. Yeah, uh, devil. The word devil means slanderer. The term false accuser in the English Bible is translated from the word diabolos or devil. Thus, Titus 2.3 says, The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness and not false accusers. False accusers is devils. So Paul is literally saying, The aged women... Likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not devils or she devils. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, it, I mean, it's really telling how bad it is that you lie. It's really telling that you are. I mean, we've had we've had people in the church that have told lies just because they didn't want to reveal something, or they wanted to put, get the target put on this person instead of them. They want, you know. They tell lies about it, but that is you're being an agent of the devil when you mm -hmm. do that. Yes. You are doing the you're doing the devil's handiwork. Yes. You're just helping him along. And that's why God hates a uh, false tongue so much. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um Donna said, when I was on the worship team singing, I felt so close to God. It was almost like an out-of-body experience. God truly used me. Amen. Um, not the, let's see. 
Lori said when the nurse from Children's called, she asked about some favorite things Aubrey liked, and I mentioned how much she loves music. The nurse asked if she was a Swifty. I said, oh, no, she doesn't even know who Taylor Swifty is. Uh, Donna said, I hope to help people feel and see God's presence in me. Amen. And Yoshana said, modern journalism equals propaganda machine. Yes. Yep. Yes. And really for both sides. Yes. I mean, it, I mean, I like Fox conservative News. Conservative and liberal. I'm, I'm conservative. I like Fox News. But I also know that they're going to tell what's, and they're going to overly do it. It's like, yeah, we already know. We already know. We already know. They, they really just don't tell me anything I didn't already know. Yep. Um, okay. Um, so I thought that was interesting that that devil meant false accuser because that's what he is. And you remember Jesus said when the devil speaks, he, he tells lies because he's the father of lies and that he cannot tell the truth. Yes. So when the devil says something to you, and you know it's not God, you know it's the devil speaking, what he says is opposite. He can't tell the truth. He cannot say the truth. That's right. Because he is the devil. He's the false accuser. What comes out of his mouth, right? Uh, what was that movie where the, was it Liar Liar, where the guy that was under that one day thing where he had to tell the truth all the time? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, the devil's about the opposite. He cannot tell the truth. An awful movie, if I remember right. Okay. Uh, where did we get to? Verse 10? 11. Do you want 11? I want 11. 11 is, yes. <laughs> okay. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So we know that this is talking about Israel. Yes. Right? So, wait a minute. The word of their testimony and the blood of the lamb. They don't have the blood of the lamb at this present time, but this means that they will. Remember the two witnesses, right? Yes. They're going to come in. And they're going to testify to Israel and the rest of the world that will listen that the blood of Jesus is what they need. And here they're going to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And then maybe giving up their lives because of it. Sometimes when I think about this, this point in time and I think about what people even now around the world go through for their faith. <clears throat> yeah. What a sorry excuse for a follower of Christ we are. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't face that much of what people have suffered, mm -hmm. and we think we're doing so great. I know. We think we, that life's so hard as a Christian here, and nobody messes with us. Well, people mess with us, but not to the degree <laughs> that they mess with them. I mean, the things they will have to endure, and and because they rebelled and they would not accept Christ, but still, we are so whiny, yeah. so spoiled. Yeah. It's shameful. It's really shameful. <clears throat> shameful. 12 and 13. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Okay. So we're, here we have something else revealed having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. We know that things have gotten really, really bad and evil in those in these days. And when we, he's cast out of heaven and not being allowed to come before the throne anymore. Yes, he can't accuse anymore because he's And cast now out. he's really mad. Yes. And he knows his time is short. And he knows his time is short now. He sees the same signs we do. He knoweth that he hath but a short time. 
what is going to be the the <clears throat> what is going to be the point when this happens when God casts him out when this war begins I think and I think when that Michael it begins, and the archangels are fighting and yeah. the demons can't prevail yeah. and what's going on on the earth this would be going on in the I don't know I don't know but point out we're not we don't told that that may have something to do with that uh, part that uh, John was told to seal up the vision and not write that. Oh, You know, yes. there's some things that we are not allowed to see. Gotcha. Every second <clears throat> that goes by, his time is getting shorter. Amen. Isn't this saying it's those who have believed on Christ been blood bought? Is that what they're talking about or after the rapture? This is... After the rapture, yeah, okay. this is after the rapture when Israel starts coming to the knowledge of Messiah, and they rec they realize this that is Jesus, the hundred and forty four thousand. This is the hundred forty four thousand. Okay. Um, Kathy said, "I really wonder if it's going to be so obvious when all this starts, or will it be like putting a frog in water and then starting to boil? Will people really see the anti-Semitic stuff or go with it on a greater scale, even than Hitler? Look at the protests now. I know." I know, because did y'all ever believe that we would see in America this being so prevalent? I didn't. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, it was a rarity, I think, and now it's just common. Yeah. We've got these Palestinian uh, groups that are, or are not, they're not even Palestinian, they're like college groups that are protesting for Palestine and against Israel, and they're being violent and terrorists basically and like do, do you not remember world war ii you know you and i sat in a jewish synagogue and listened to a man who was in one of those prison camps yes we did and lost some of his family because of it and yes and, they uh, they don't care no. they have forgotten or don't care okay so can we go back just for a minute because mm -hmm. you know like carol asked where it's talking about the blood vault mm -hmm. We know that as born-again Christians, we were bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. But in this reference, he is talking about what happens after there's that fight in the heavenlies. The demons do not prevail. Satan is cast out of heaven. See, in some ways, I always thought that was had already happened a long time ago. Like yes, and it, yes ago. and it did. Um, so this is, okay, so now I'm getting confused. Okay. Uh, so back up. Um, so verse 9 and 10. Okay. Is not just about the rapture, after the rapture? Yes, it is. <clears throat> okay, now I'm confused. <clears throat> Hang on. Straighten me out, honey. Okay. Because I know that Satan was cast out of heaven way back. But is I, I wanted to verify what what this point right here he's talking about. The great dragon was cast out, that old servant. So there's a time when he will no longer be allowed before God, or or is not allowed. I think that he is required to go before God to account for himself. Even now. Yeah, I think he does. I think just like in Job, that Satan is required. Well, let's go to the Book of Job and see that. <clears throat> so Donna said I thought that too I thought Satan was already cast out of heaven and Jan said that too but but see that's the thing because in Job he's coming before the Lord mm -hmm. so and it, clearly this is not a one time deal so, wow. so he's cast out of living in heaven as one of God's God's angels yeah that's Past. That's, That's way eons back, past. eons past. Mm -hmm. But he still comes before the Lord for okay. what? Okay. In Job so. chapter 1, um, Job chapter 1, verse 6, And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from growing to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Okay. So the sons of God are who? 
The sons of God here are are the angels. The an- all of the angels or just the ones that have fallen with him? All of them, including the ones that have fallen. So all of them have to present, have themselves. To present themselves before God. For mm-hmm. what purpose, you reckon? Just for accountability? I don't know. Well, yeah, for accountability. God God has to, God is in control of everything, and he works through those beings. Yes. Right? They are his helpers. They go to know his will. We don't know that angels are omniscient, so they wouldn't know. They well, they're may, not, they wouldn't be omniscient because right? he's the only one that's omniscient. That's right. So he, he reveals things to them. Um, that, you know, it's a, it's a, speculative thing to think about what angels know and don't know um there's been a lot of uh christian fiction written about angels and how i've I've read some really great stories about how angels at the birth of christ or at the crucifixion say they they wanted to they wanted to attack i mean the messiah is being yeah murdered and they and and they're told no wait yeah. Wait. And uh when you when you think about it in that realm it is it is awesome that these beings are totally like a like the perfect soldier, they're totally obedient, whether they think they should be doing this or not. They they just simply go by what the commander says. Yeah. And I think that they go before God, um, get orders to worship, right? To yeah. connect. And they go out and they're, they're helpers for us, they're messengers, but also the ones um, the ones that uh, when Jesus walked the earth, the demons, they were they were subject. They knew who he was. Yeah. Right? Right. And they trembled about it. And, right. Um, that's, a, that's a really deep thing to think about. Yeah. That, so uh, this, this passage here in verse 7, 8, and 9. Mm-hmm is not talking about when Lucifer was cast out of heaven. No. This is talking about sometime in the last 2,000 years. Well, I think the war in heaven, a lot of theologians, and Jack Van Impey said this, a lot of theologians believe that this happens with the rapture, that the war starts. Okay. That when the rapture takes place, that's when Satan knows that his time is about up. Okay, well, that makes sense. And so go back to seven, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And see, that <coughs> the words any more is the ones I keep going yeah, back to. Yeah, their place to. found any more in they heaven. They were mm-hmm. allowed to go before, yes. the, before the Lord for yes. whatever purpose, yes. but no longer. Yes. I see. So really, at this point, God has absolutely created a complete separation. Yes. There's so much more happening than we realize. I know. I mean, it really explains a lot of why the world is turning right now. And 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 turning so completely. Yes, it's bizarre. So so bizarre. So quickly. In, it in seems our lifetime, like. things have things that used to be good and. It, were, are now considered evil by society, and things that used to be wicked and evil are now applauded and, I know. and brought up as as being normal. And and the things that the church is allowing to go on within the church yeah. is mind boggling to me. And and I think, how is this possible? This is how that's possible. Well, we studied the first three chapters of the seven churches. Yeah. We saw churches that they were lukewarm, churches that allowed Oh, God doesn't care about right, that. The Lord, they allowed certain teachings mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. those kind of things and wow. very uh stern warnings to those churches. Now listen, <laughs> if y'all have questions, don't forget to post them. I know I asked Paul a lot of questions, but I'll read well, your I, questions. I want, I want the questions to be asked and and that is it is a little confusing. Well, that you know, this whole chapter yeah. is past, present, and future to some extent, because we saw the woman. Yeah. The woman was is 
Well, we are the bride of Christ, right. but this woman is Israel. Yes. Jacob and two wives, right? Right. I mean, that's symbolic. Yeah. Right. So this is um, mm -hmm. this this woman is uh, it's not Jesus' mother Mary. This woman is Israel because he came from Israel. Mm. <clears throat> so we're at verse 14. Okay. Uh, interesting, interesting scripture. Read 14 for us. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Okay. Times and times and half a time. And she's given two. Two wings. Two wings. You know, Shauna said, do you think people will be shocked that God means what he says and that he gave us the scriptures to study for examples for us and for exhortation to choose life? Will people be shocked that he meant what he said? Yes. They're shocked now, but yes. they, yeah. This is so deep that I've gone back to the beginning and I'm watching everything again as well as reading each chapter in the Bible and the book. Yeah. I know. I know. We could t we could finish this and then go back to the beginning and, and start, start again all over. and see more because it's it's really that way. It really is. Well, here here's an interesting passage and it makes me think. Um, and there wasn't a lot of thing from Jack Van Impey on this. Yes. Uh, Maudie said, "Can you clarify? Is the devil still allowed to go talk to God, or has that stopped?" I think that he is. I think that he's still, just like Job chapter 1, I think he still has to present himself before God. And I, I think, I think at this the point, key of what you said, though, is has to present himself. Yes. God he's requires not allowed, it. He's not loosed. He's not to, allowed to come in there and worship because he wouldn't be worshiping or to come in there and try to get more of the angels to follow him. But you know, that that makes me understand a little bit better after the thousand year millennial reign the bible said satan is loosed for a season so after that he is fully allowed mm -hmm. to deceive one more time mm -hmm. and we don't know how long that period of time will last but um in our human intellect a lot of it makes no sense no. We would just squish him and be done with him. Mm -hmm. But God has a divine order. He does, and a purpose for all of us to find him, to follow him, to desire to learn about him. Everybody that's on this study, you are one of the ones that want to know. That's right. We all want to know. We want to know the will of God. We want to understand his word. We're not doing this because it's just fun or interesting. We could have fun or interesting hobbies, something else. But this is not Greek mythology that we're studying. This is, we want to know the mind of God, the will of God, and seek the face of God. And there's still in that depth, we still have things we won't know. Yeah. And that's, I guess that is, we have to reach a point on some things where we don't, we, we put it on the back burner, yeah. right? Mary pondered these things and kept them in her heart, right? We have things like Mary had with Jesus where that just makes me think. I, I've got I've got things in my life, they're on the back burner. Yeah. I, you know, you yeah. have to. We, we talked about them. We don't understand them. I think that's why when you go somewhere and you look over some stunningly beautiful scene scenic like go up on Chihau Mountain get up on Bald Rock and you just stand there and you're just silent mm -hmm. because there are so many questions that begin to flood your being you just have to you just have to stop and that's the way I feel about the word I mean I can be reading and that and just like I said a minute ago or you said has to he has to come before God. Yeah, he's it's required. required. Yeah. That makes me stop. God doesn't deal in conference calls. And no. He, he 
And we think Satan <clears throat> is out of God's control. Satan is just doing his thing and God's just trying to work with us while Satan is out there. That's right. He is not out of God's control. No. Well, just like with Job, he said, you can do this, but you can't have his life. Right? Yes. He, he gave him a limited power and said, you can do this, but you're not going to take his life. Wow. Now, you had a bunch of comments. I I'm saw sorry. That's oh. just that's just blowing my mind. And I've, uh, Molly said, this is very deep. Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, Lori said, Brother Paul, let's really consider doing that, a part two of this study or a do-over. There's so much. I know, right? Maybe I'll have a chart next time. <laughs> um, I think they will still make explanations and excuses for it, even when they see with their own eyes, just like when Jesus walked among them and they didn't believe. That's yes. true. Um, yes, uh, Carol would agree. Uh, so in the end of Revelation, is Satan gone forever? Yes. And we were just saying exactly that tonight at dinner about the majesty of God's creation and our awe of it. It's so true, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Donna said, or hell still exists, but he has lost his power in the end. Yes. The, the lake of fire is yes. there. Mm -hmm. Um it is. It is. I mean, if we just let our emotions get the better of us, we just really could. You you couldn't write this into a book or a movie. That's, no human could that's write fiction. it. Yeah, it's. And and when you see the the tie in with the rest of the Bible, it's really sad that people want to throw away the Old Testament or the New Testament, or they only want to study the Gospels. Or you you have to study all sixty six books because they all. Or connected. Jesus is in every one of the books of the Bible. He is there. And um, have you ever wondered why there's 66 books? Yeah, I have. I have. Um, he's got a short time, so he is. He is. Um, okay, the part where it says where she is nourished for a time and yeah, times and, a, and half yeah. a time. Let's catch back up. Uh, okay. Verse the fourteen. Two wings. Yeah. He's got two wings, and so I started seeing prophetically something happens that God delivers Israel some way by air, either aircraft, bombers. Um, you know what I mean? We're yeah. talking. There's given two wings, and it's a little strange expression to say she was given two wings. Why not just she was given wings? Yeah. Apparently, there's going to be two means of something delivering Israel. And Interesting. It's in the it's in the um, symbolism of wing two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place. So maybe a maybe a um, evacuation, mm. right? Some way of getting Israel delivered from the attack that she's under, um, where she's nourished for a time and times and half a time. So what does that sound like? Three and a half years. Yeah. But you know, the United States is supposedly the eagle, right? How could the United States evacuate yeah, the Israel like or just send, we could send our airplanes to, and missiles to stop whatever's attacking yeah. her. Israel has a good defense system. The Iron Dome. The Iron Dome, yeah. but... Uh, I mean, anything anything we try to figure out is just speculation. Great, great point. And whoever is around at that time will understand that verse. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They will flip open a Bible and put their finger on 14, and I get it. But this is after the rapture. So there are no Christians left on this planet. Mm -hmm. So whoever is coming in to save Israel mm -hmm. is supernatural. Or other Christians that, that have are, come to the Lord to... in that time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. would they have power? I don't know. I don't speculation, know. speculation. 
Um, Carol said, I'm talking about the idea that God says to Satan, you can do this to Carol, but you can't do this. <laughs> I know, right? Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. I wonder about that, though. I mm. wonder if God has allowed, I know that God has allowed us to go through certain serious trials. And he says, I, I'm assuming, he says, okay. I'm going to allow this to happen to them. When the devil went into Judas and he turned Jesus in, yeah. do you think the devil thought the devil was allowed to do that? Yeah. Do you think the devil thought he would ultimately destroy Jesus I think he at did. that point? I think he did think you, that. You think he didn't know that Jesus had the power over death? I don't think the devil's that smart. We give the devil a lot more credit. Don't you think? Do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I don't I don't think he understood the power or ultimately. You know, a lot of times people I think he really thought he was gonna destroy Jesus. Yeah. Well, you know, just stepping back to our society, sometimes people that are great leaders are martyred or killed and then they become even more powerful in death. Yeah. But it, it was not that way with Jesus. He he came back to life. Yes. Right? Yes. And um, it was worse than I think that he thought would happen. The devil. The devil, yeah. yeah. I think that the devil had no idea that he was. And, but, you know, that's how we gain victory over him. He attacks and and tries to destroy us. But when we come forth praising and honoring God mm -hmm. and serving God anyway and not falling into his trap even though we may suffer mm -hmm. greatly but we don't give in that's how we gain victory though God slay me yet will I serve him and that has always been my scripture because yeah. I've always felt like <laughs> okay you know, I've got one more breath, Lord. Are you going to take that one too? I mean, I've always, that's always been my scripture. Mm -hmm. Though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Right. No matter what the devil does. That's right. No matter what, y'all. Um, okay. Hang on, hang on. Uh, Kathy said, I don't know if this will make sense, but I think we all think what a big deal all of our lives are. The joys, the sorrows, the good, the bad, the majesty, the horrors. We witness. I think when people say, why does God allow this or that? It's because he knows what we think is such a big deal, good or bad, is peanuts compared to the joy and beauty we will experience and the sorrow those who don't accept Christ will deal with. I agree. Well Carol, put. Carol said, I think it's people who have believed on Christ during the trib after the rapture. Yes, mm -hmm. I think so. Yes. Um. Like you ain't seen nothing yet, kids. Amen. And Cece said, goes back to the old age old adage, the good Lord will not put on you what you cannot handle. I love that. God is in control. He, he is, is in ultimately control. in control. And you say, well, why did God send this hurricane through? Why did God allow this flood? We don't know why he allowed it, but he didn't do it. Yeah, God doesn't do evil things. No, he, he just allows them to pass through our lives right. to to strengthen us, yes. to show us what we're capable of in him. Yeah. It's a test a lot of times on yeah. our faith. Um, Maudie said, do you think that the devil still thinks he could possibly win or does he fully he grasp his ultimate defeat? He must still think that he can win because he, he can read the Bible. He, he's got the not the understanding of the word of God. He can quote it. But he doesn't have the Holy Spirit to quicken the truth. And, and he's a liar, so he can't believe the truth. Yeah. Mm. It really doesn't make sense. It's not even logical. If you was, you know, Mr. Spock in another galaxy and you say, this is very illogical. You cannot, <laughs> with one third, you cannot overcome the creator with two thirds, right? Yeah. Or even the creator by himself. Yeah. Even if all the angels had fallen, with he's Satan. Still God. He's still God. Ah. <clears throat> um, Carol said Satan has totally deluded himself. Amen. 
Um, you know, Shauna said, I was wondering what you think, how far from allowing it is in giving permission or knowing us and our mother's womb and he chooses to stay with us through everything the devil has planned. Not that y'all allows evil, but in this shows how much bigger he is over it all. Amen. Did you get that? Mm -mm. Okay. How far from allowing it as in giving permission and knowing us in our mother's wombs, and he chooses to stay with us through everything the devil has planned. I don't still don't understand the question. Okay. He knows us in our mother's womb. Yes. He knows what we're, we're capable of, and he chooses to stay with us. Through our Walking life. through the things that Satan does. You may have to reword. Yeah, I, I, do you understand reword. the question? I think I do, but okay. I don't want to assume. Okay. Jan said he lies to himself even if he thinks yes. he can win. Yes. Great point. Yes. He, you know, that's that is a great point. And think about it. Most liars, they really believe their own stories. Yes. They're they're sitting there telling something made up. Yes. And they just they'll sit there straight faced, look you right in the eye, and lie, and they believe themselves. Yeah. Right? The that end. is a great point. That, is a that great he point. believes his own lies. Uh, Yoshana said, how far between the two scenarios? The allowing it or the, the walking through it, knowing who we are? I think it's both. I think there, that he allows it and then he walks through it with us. Does that make that sense? That makes sense. Are I mean, we I think it that, right? I think that he what he allows, just like Jesus in Gethsemane, he said, you know, Deliver me from this cup, if it's possible, right? If it yeah. be possible, take this from me, but your will be done. See, to me, that's the key to the whole deal. We have to relinquish our will. Yeah. We've got to wake up in every situation and say, not my will. Yeah. And Jesus, it took him an hour. to. We, we, we can say an hour because he told his disciples, could you not, not pray with me for an hour? Yeah. It took him an hour to pray through. He was praying, it said, it's sweating like great drops of blood. Yeah. It took him an hour to pray through to finally come. Like, do we not think we have to do that too? I know. We have to do that. We have to pray through something and something we're struggling with. And when we, we think, God, do you not see this? And we have to pray through that and reach a point where you can stand up and say, your will be done. I yeah. think that that's not an instant thing at all. Have with, you ever thought about what the modern church would be doing in that moment? They yeah. would be down there telling Jesus, you don't have to go through this. Yeah. Don't you worry about it. We're here with you. Yeah. God loves you. He would never ask you to go through this trial. Yeah. That That's just the enemy telling you that. That's right. I know. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Um. <coughs> Satan is a narcissist. Isn't that the most overused word of all time lately? Everything that pops up is about narcissists. He is, though. Um, we can't handle anything ourselves. God leads us and strengthens us in himself to go through what is before us. Um, and he and the devil can win souls, and we have to keep trying to prevent that. Yes, yes. His will be done. That's been my prayer this year. Amen. Great, great comments. And I, oh, I love it. I love it when when the things that come up on here just it's like the light comes on, you know, for all of us. And it sparks a whole new Absolutely. thing. I love it. Absolutely. And understanding that, whether we understand the reason or not, but just understanding the fact of it that the devil still believes he can win. He's going to go through this. He's going to try to destroy Israel. Yes. yes. <clears throat> okay, so two wings of a great eagle are going to fly her into the wilderness. Yeah, whatever that happens when the this was a this is basically prophetic, so when that prophecy takes place, the people will understand it. It will it will we see it as lining up with Matthew 24 all these events, and we think that's amazing. It's going to be even more amazing for people that are here the last seven years that are going to have, a, they're going to find a Bible 
and they're going to open it and they're going to go. It's it's verse by verse. They're going to be back a few verses. Wait a minute. Yes. There's a war in heaven. What's Israel going to do? And they get to verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Right? Something's going to happen. And they're going to have the bell ding louder than we, we think we hear the bell when we, yeah. you know, get something. Yeah. They're going to get it. And yeah. Mm. They're gonna have. They're gonna be living this. Mm -mm -mm. And this is one hundred forty-four thousand of Israel. Yes. Yes. This is Israel. Um, After the rapture. Mm -hmm. And I think there will be Christians or people saved um, from simply not taking the mark of the beast. Now that's a good. That's a good thought and a good question is what happens to those people who were not of Israel? They weren't of the 144,000. They were Gentiles, we'll say, and they they just had the head knowledge. They they Their mama took them to church. They've read a Bible, but they're not saved. They happen to be living here. They happen to be preppers, we'll say, and they lived in the woods, yeah. right? And they have stockpiled and are, are surviving by hiding. And they've not taken the mark of the beast. Will they be of the millennial? Is that why there's a millennial reign? That those people will have to live out and be tested by the devil, whatever. You know, are they? I don't think, I think this is totally Israel right here. Okay. I think but because. I, what of, you just said, though. I, I don't see that myself because I would think you would have to choose during that seven years. You have to choose. You will not be allowed to not choose. Yeah. So you can't just be a prepper out in the woods and nobody finds you. Right. You must choose. True. God right. or Satan. Right. The blood of Jesus or Satan, which will be the Antichrist yes. in the system. And I think people, because they're going to be so blinded, I mean, we've read through incredible things that happened and it said they still hated God. I know. God gave them time. Well, when, it says in verse 9, um, let's see. Wait a minute. Not in verse 9. It says where he deceived the whole world. Yeah, yeah it is. Which deceiveth the whole world. Yeah, verse he nine. deceived the whole world. He hasn't deceived me. So it's not at this point. Right. He hasn't deceived you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So y'all aren't deceived by the devil. Right. So we are here He's at this deceiving point. Deceiving the whole he, world. The whole world. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Um, okay. People will be scrambling for Bibles if they aren't destroyed. Yes. Only if those people chose Jesus. Yes. 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 Do you think Yah tells the adversary to do evil to us or hears what the evil one wants to do and allows it only this far? Or could it be that through all that this life in a fallen world with the adversary throwing everything he has at anyone who looks at their creator, Yah says, stays with us, his children, through it all with evidence, thereby showing the adversary that he has won, he is God, can and does reign through it all. I don't understand that question at all. No, she's, yeah, <laughs> I do. Do you think that God is telling the adversary, you can do this and you can do this, you can do this? Or wait till he suggests it. Or wait till he suggests it. What the evil one wants to do to us and allows it only this far. Or could it be that it, he's just walking with us and things are happening? Mm. Do you think that? I'm, now, Yoshana, I may be getting this wrong, what you're saying. Like, well, in the book of Job, God was the one that mentioned Job. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Right? I mean, that's almost like. Oh, it would be easy to get real irritated at that thought. Yeah. Yeah. That because God kind of threw you out there. Yeah, it's like you have some children. And you said, have you thought about this one right here? And you, you know, you throw one of them under the bus. That That's what it, some people interpret that to be. Yeah. But. When Satan is going about being the accuser of the brethren and and God says, have you thought about this one? They're trying to accuse him. 
And Satan says, well, no, he didn't have anything, any ammunition against Job because he was upright and perfect, right? And he said, have you considered Job? And he says, well, he only, he's only that way because you take care of him. But God knew Job. God knew that yeah, he was. Yeah, but if that was me, I would be very irritated and say, you know, thanks a lot. <laughs> But there again, God sees things from such a different perspective than we even can understand. It, does. It, it is, it should be to us. I, I'm trying to find the right word. I don't want to say honorable, but something of a compliment when God says, you can beat this, you can yes. go through this. Yes. This test that I have allowed you to go through, you will win. Yes. You can't know victory unless you have a battle. You can't know the crown. You can't get the crown without the cross, right? Yeah. You've got to have the cross first and then the crown. You know, I think about when the boys go out to clean out the barn. They, you remember the first time or two we sent boys to clean out the barn, they got so grossed out and nasty and they got in trouble several times for doing things they shouldn't have done and then it was all over with and we handed them money mm. and now they ask me all the time Greeny when's it time to clean out the barn oh. and they still have to go do all the nasty chore of cleaning that barn but they know there's a reward and it yeah. things change and the Bible says that even with what all Job went through, his end was so much better yes. than his beginning. Yes. And I, I just keep thinking about the barn or going out there and pruning fruit trees. Mm -hmm. The trees are big. They're great. Everything's happy. And mm -hmm. we go out there and we whack them down and they look horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Right. But next year, the fruit is abounding. Mm -hmm. But we see that because we're here and the boys aren't here yet mm -hmm. or the tree. Does, you know, somebody looking at that tree says, what have you done? You've destroyed that tree. Mm -hmm. But the pruning was necessary and that's the way we've got to look at it. What mm -hmm. Job went through seems so horrible from a human perspective, but mm -hmm. from an eternal perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at what Job's story has done. Yeah, he's still getting his crowns in heaven because he's his story is there for all time to read. And my word, how it's brought me through some stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, some serious stuff. Mm -hmm. We've just got to see it through God's eyes. Yep. He's got a legacy. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> could 15 be water from a blown up dam and then an earthquake that opened up the earth and swallowed the water? Interesting. All right. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Um, if people refuse the mark, also won't believe in Jesus, Satan kills them, they die unbelievers. Yes. Right? Yes. If they don't take the mark. And, but, uh, but also won't believe in Christ, they think they're going to remain neutral. That's a good question. I think they I, are you unbelievers. Cannot, you can't be un... Uh, well... I asked my dad this not too long ago. I said, you know, in stories like old Westerns, there's always the good guy and the bad guy. But a lot of times the good guy, he wears the white hat. And a lot of times he's not a godly man. Yeah. But he's the good guy. Yeah. Right? He's, he still goes up with the barmaid upstairs and he still drinks his whiskey and he still all that. But he's he's the, the good guy. And and I said, you know, in in reality... People that people that remain neutral, they, they're atheists or whatever, but they're morally good by God's own law. You know how how do they get judged? But you have to receive Jesus to get to heaven. There is no There's other no way. There's no other way. And in in the last seven years, if you reject the Antichrist, you know there's people that are anti-government now. They're anti everything. They're uh, everything is. Um, the political system, they, they balk at it and they're, you know, they've got their ears up listening for anything, leery of any new 
change or whatever. Anyway, th those people <clears throat> are not necessarily, and, and they are, may be very conservative, but they're not Christian. Right. A lot of them are not. Um, but they're not going to heaven. But they're not going to heaven. Doesn't matter how morally good and how much they give to the poor or how sweet they are or even their good intentions. Right. They're not going to heaven. That's right. Um, okay, hang on. We got lots of comments. Um, no one gets the Father but by Jesus. And Kathy said, I don't think God is telling him to harm us. I think the natural bad stuff that just happens like illness and disease and evil deeds occur because we choose to leave Eden. We chose to leave Eden. Um, like mm -hmm. if you are in the space station and safe with oxygen and food, but go outside, you have to live or die on your own. That's a good way to look at it. Um, because our of our sinful nature, we which were we are all born due to the fall in Eden. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does God use the devil as his whipping stick against his children no. for good or for bad, or does the devil go around trying to beat on all the sheep and succeeding here and there? Yet Yah uses the shepherd to keep the sheep from one thing through another, thwarting every scheme of the enemy, thereby Showing who is truly in control. I th she's no. The devil does not get to use, get to whip up on us, and the Lord just kind of stands back and walks through it with us. I don't believe that for a minute. Oh, you're talking about like where it says God chastises his children because he loves them, but he uses the devil to do it. Yeah. Is that what she's asking? I think so. I don't think that. He uses the devil. I think the chastisement we get is the chastisement of the heart. Well, and it, and Kathy said it, and it, you know, it's like we make choices that lead us into consequences that yeah. we have to deal with, right. and God walks with us through that, but we still have to suffer the consequences yes. of the choices we made. But I do believe, correct me, that Satan has a, a plan to destroy us. And he, I believe that there are, how do you put it? Like a, like he knows what buttons to push to send us, not because he's omniscient, mm -hmm. but because, yeah. how do you say that though? Well, this all goes back to all things work together for good to those that love God, for those that are called according to his purpose. Now, all things work together for our good, and they they further separate us. It it gets further in our walk when we were born again. Further down the road, it becomes clearer and clearer the battles that we face. We will overcome. They they start off being little small battles, and then they end up being bigger battles. That doesn't mean well. I guess I shouldn't have been a Christian. Now I'm just getting in bigger. Brother Paul said it's getting bigger. No, that's that's not the way it is. It's just that we handle those things and it gets us, it further refines us. And that's a good point. That's further, a really good point. It further the refines fire. us, the refining fire. It further perfects us, matures us into the man or woman of God that we're supposed to be by these things. Right? So in some ways, the Lord does turn up the heat. Or allows the heat to get hotter. Maybe. I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that we could say that God does that intentionally. Just turns it up to see us squirm, but He allows us to move deeper. He allows more. He He will allow more as we become more mature because we can handle it, right? You don't put a a uh, new soldier out there in battle. They train for years before yeah. they go into a battle. The people that went into World War II were already in the military. Yeah. The recruits that went in in 1942 that they drafted or the volunteer or whatever, those people didn't get sent right over to Europe or to Japan. They they trained in boot camps for months. Yeah. Some of them were there at D-Day in 1944, but they had gone in in the beginning of the war. They ended up in D-Day three years later. Yeah. Because they trained that long. Yeah. And so we, we uh, as we mature, we get stronger in our faith and we get, and it is a refining thing. Yeah. We get more perfected. We become 
that supernatural man of God that we're supposed to be yeah. through all those acts. We don't, we, you know, we sometimes we think, well, I've just gotten wisdom through age. I'm older now. I don't want the material things I used to. Maybe it's because you've learned yeah. they don't bring you happiness, yes. right? Yes. Not because you just got to a certain age, because I know some people that are my age, they, they get in debt at their retirement, and they keep buying things, and you know they keep thinking that's going to bring them happiness. You know, yes. it, it has to do with your your spiritual walk. Yes, right. You're maturing in, You're maturing. in the Lord. Yes. Does that <clears throat> help at all, Yoshana? Um, let's see. I don't think God uses the devil that way. Okay. Even though we choose to leave Eden, God has still stayed with us. How merciful He is. Amen. Um. Oh, Yoshana said, I'm sorry, y'all. I was closer to what I meant the first time I asked, but some good points all around stuff to think on. Sorry, we're just thick tonight. We're just thick. Um, that's it. That's what I meant. The turning up of the heat for the refining and God being God of all. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Oh, every time I touch this thing, it flips. Um I keep looking of the story about exactly that, how through the hottest fire the craftsman will see his own image in his creation. Paul is a blacksmith, as some of you may know. And you have learned quite a bit because you've shared it with me in dealing with the fire and heating the metal. and mm. and But the refining of metal like gold, you know, they put it in a, the, what do you call the ba the basin or the, vat or whatever and they heat it mm -hmm. and over time as the dross is scraped out mm -hmm. eventually, all the impurities come to the top yes and uh and it's scraped off well you've got different carats of gold you've got eight carat 10 carat 12 carat and 24 carat is pure gold right and um the the lesser gold has uh impurities in it but um the pure gold is worth more and it when they i've <clears> seen <throat> the the <coughs> pictures and all and i think there's videos of them refining that gold in the crucible. little van the crucible. crucible that's it the pot is a crucible and it does look like glass on the top mm -hmm. when it's all clean and all of the dross is out yeah. you can see your reflection in it because mm -hmm. it's it's completely clear or clean yeah. even steel top. it has um as they're forging steel, it has uh, different amounts of impurities. And um, when I'm heating the iron, it will scale on the outside, oxidation. And uh, a lot of times it, it has all kind of stuff flakes off of it. But I can take a completely rusty piece of iron and put it in there, bring it up to temperature, hang around, and it'll come out clean. All the, the crud will be beat off of it. and I just think, God, go ahead. You need to beat the crud off of me. <laughs> you know, I mean, but we got to be willing for God to, to be do willing. that and not get mad at Him. And like I said a minute ago, it seems irritating, but right. we've got to understand that that is the goal. Right. That's the point. Well, look at Jeremiah when he when he told told him to go down to the Potter's house, right? Yes. And he said he said go down to the Potter's house and watch him. And Jeremiah watched him, and he had some clay and he was forming it but it collapsed or something <coughs> and then and he reshaped it into something else it started off maybe being a pot and then it it collapsed and so the potter saw that this clay was too wet or too dry so he made something else and he said can i not do the same thing with israel and shape it into the thing i want it to be and with our own lives you know Amen. we we start off we think we're started off doing this and because of Un, of um, sin in our own lives or some imperfection and it's not because of God the potter it wasn't the potter's fault that the stuff fell it was the clay it was had the fault right yeah. but the potter said I can make this out of that yes. so our lives are that way where we can we have some imperfection or some sin that, that we've been plagued with and we're fighting to overcome but life changes for us and then we go into this new mode and think God's doing something new in me now. Yes. You know? But all of the potter and the refiner's fire and all of that, there is an aggressive act 
that takes place. I mean, if y'all have ever worked with clay and doing pottery, you've got to pound that thing. You've got to, you have to really put some strength into it to get that clay workable and the refiner's fire. You have to build a fire and heat the thing up. I've got a pottery wheel that I built. It's out in the garage. And the first time I was trying to center the clay, you know, I had, I had like a a, whole task. Pounded it down and then I started to wheel up and my whole body was going around like this. It was it was tough, you know, to do so, that. Yeah. You gotta focus really you to do. do that. You do. We've got two more ver- or okay. three more. Uh fifteen. Um, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now somebody mentioned earlier I think it was Carol. <coughs> Carol said something. <coughs> and then um um, Jack Van Impey's book, he used one word that made really made a lot of sense, and he said propaganda, the Ooh. flood of propaganda. And look at what's happening in the media, the flood of propaganda against Israel right now. Yeah. The the lies about, uh, you remember the bombs that hit the hospital, and immediately the news jumped on, and they said Israel had shot bombs and hit a hospital, and it and the missiles came from the Hamas side, and wow. everybody believed when Hamas told the lie until they had the video proof of it that these missiles came up and then they failed and fell into a hospital, and that they were hiding Hamas soldiers in the hospital. Right. You know right. the lies that they're telling, but this is this is I think could be a flood of propaganda. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Interesting thought. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. And uh, 15, or excuse me, 16 and 17. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, something will happen because it says the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth. So, it, the the visual imagery here is that it gets, it's just like pulling the plug on the drain. Right. Well, you know, and I think Carol said it like a dam burst mm-hmm. and the waters flooded out, but then there was an earthquake that swallowed up the waters. Yeah. So we don't know how that's going to happen, but there will be some way. And this is all um, going to take place. Like I said, people that are living it will open this book and say that's exactly what's happening. Well, and it just once again will will reveal the truth that God is preserving his people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amen. That it will be a supernatural thing. Supernatural. It won't just be an act of nature. It will yeah. be a supernatural thing. Right. And they have to go through this to, just like we have to go through things, Israel has to go through things. It's not just like, oh, I believe now God just take me on to heaven. You've taken all those Christians. I'm going to be a Jewish believer. Take me on to heaven. No, they have to go through this. Mm-hmm. They have to go through the time. And... Right. And this <clears throat> is during the seven years. Um, yes, such propaganda. I know we aren't supposed to be afraid, but it scares me. Like making you. <laughs> I, know, I know it can be scary. I know it can be, but you know, Anchor yourself, anchor your spirit, anchor your mind, and know that God is in control. Because we cannot walk in fear. We just can't. Okay. Verse 17. Here we read it. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, the remnant of her seed. Yes. That's the 144,000? Yes, the remnant. Wow, this has been... This has been good. We went over almost 40 minutes. Really? We did. <laughs> I apologize it went so long, but... Well, there's mm-hmm. lots of comments. This was a this was a short chapter. I kept thinking, we may not make an hour on this chapter. Dan said, I'm so <coughs> happy to learn who the woman is in this chapter. I never understood that, but now I know the woman is Israel, and it makes so much more sense to me. Yeah. Once again, thank y'all. Oh, we love it. We love it. 
I'm not afraid for myself, but for my kids. I know. I believe me. Believe me, Kathy. I know. I'm right there with you. Well, uh, that was so interesting. Everybody had such great comments tonight, and yeah. I always please share your thoughts and questions. I it may be something that I've not thought about that I need to go and think about some more. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say I've got the answers, but we all we're studying this together. We're trying to learn yeah. through. Um, great questions and great Maudie comments. Maudie said, this has been the best study I've seen in a long time. I'm so thankful. Glad you got to join in, Maudie. And Carol said, consequences for those who wind up in the trib due to unbelief and then finally do believe. Yes. Yep. Love you, Sissy. <coughs> we love y'all so much. Amen. Thank you so much. And I am retired officially now next week. I don't know what next week, right? We'll be here next week. I mean, I don't know what our plans are. Tomorrow we're going to... We don't have to have any plans anymore. We can do whatever we want to. Well, that's true. Okay. And Donna, about that group picture, um, we can come to uh, somewhere with it, where y'all are and have lunch and that kind of thing. Yes. Donna, next time y'all do a group lunch, call Paul and he'll come meet you. I'll come and have lunch with you. Have a group picture. That's right. We'll do a group picture. Or you could Photoshop me in. You can do that. She said, congratulations. Thank you. So Shauna's enjoying it. Roger, so good to have you with us, Roger. Uh, we right. love y'all. All right. Good night, everybody.